We're in the book of Ephesians, and I'm taking it kind of verse by verse. Uh, last week, I made the statement that this is Paul's message to a group of Christians who basically had been struggling with their identity as to who they were in this world. And, and I made the statement last week that this is a positional statement. And, and what that means is we're not necessarily required to be everything this says right now. <coughs> and, and as Paul reads this and he writes it from prison. He says, this, this is what you will be. But in reality, it's who you are now. And even further reality, I saw you this way from the foundations of the earth before God laid the foundation, I saw you this way. And so this, this message of, of Paul's is part of his word of God for us. This is what we shall be. <coughs> Just as the world portrays to us what the world considers is normal, this is what God considers. And so I'm going to begin with one of my favorite Bible words, <coughs> therefore. And I've always said, whenever you see the word therefore, find out what it's there for. Therefore being, since you positionally are seated with Christ, therefore I'm going to pray for you the following prayer. And so Paul says, therefore I also, <coughs> after I heard of the faith of Lake United Methodist Church, and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. Oh, that's you. We do. There's no problem, Lord. That's us. That's who we are. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for the saints everywhere. All over the world. There are Christians in China. There are Christians in Russia. There are Christians in Iran and Afghanistan. And Lord, they are experiencing persecution. And they're, they're limited, Lord, in the knowledge they have of God. Oh Lord, we are so blessed and we, we have been given everything you have. And, and we are so honored, Lord, to be your people. And Paul says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Oh, Lord, I, I can see the, the people of Lake right now in my spirit as I close my eyes, Lord. I look at each one and I pray for them. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory. Glory. What in the world? Glory. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. We, we don't know what glory is, but we, we look at these words and it says, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Glory is when Christ will come and present himself as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Glory forever. And may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Wisdom 
Every thought you have, you must take captive to the wisdom of God. Every thought you have has two implications. One of the knowledge of God, one of the knowledge of this world. There's only two, two views possible. And I'm praying that the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of God, as Solomon spoke wisdom and all, he said, God, I just pray for wisdom. And Solomon received a spirit of wisdom. And, and Paul is praying for the same spirit of wisdom that Solomon had for you here at Lake. And for the revelation in the knowledge of God. Do you realize that the world has no revelation of the knowledge of God? What is the knowledge of God? That God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the revelation of God. It's simple. John 3.16 tells it all. And, and Paul continues on and he says, and that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Now, the eyes of your understanding. Your mind. Take, we take every thought captive. But the scripture in Romans 12, 1 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that your mind might be enlightened. <laughs> Enlightenment was an age in history in which God revealed Himself to the world through His Son. That's enlightenment. And that you, your understanding be enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of His calling. Oh, our hope is an anchor to our soul. Our hope is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died for our sins that we might live for His righteousness. And that you might know what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. God's inheritance is in you. And what God is preparing you for. The coronation of those who are to inherit eternal life. The coronation when the crown will be placed upon your head. The inheritance of the saints to those who believe in Jesus Christ, there is an inheritance. You shall receive a crown at the coronation. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe? I mean, these are some of the most incredible words ever penned by a human. To think about that, that you may know what is the exceeding, exceeding, greater than 
exceeding greatness. You know, I'm sure Paul just didn't have words adequate for greatest, greater, what's better than that? Exceeding greatness. Uh, beyond anything I could imagine. You, you're, I want you to understand how great it is what you possess. I mean, I've already spoken more words than you can imagine. And, and that's what Paul wants you to see. What I've got prepared for you and for who you are going to be exceeds anything you can express with words. When you get over there and you experience what I've got, you are going to be blown away. Is that okay? Do you mind getting blown away with the best of the best? Better than the best. His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power. When Jesus died from our death, God reached down and raised Him from the dead. According to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ, when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right... What, what do I keep telling you? He's right there. He's at the right hand of the Father. Right now. There He is. I, oh, let's move this earthly heaven, heaven. Just get rid of it. I want to see Him. And that's, that's what you have to do right now is see Him. He's seated right there at the right hand of the Father. We said it in our confession of faith earlier. And He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places. Now catch this. Far above all principalities, and powers, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but in the age to come. Did you, did you catch that? Jesus has been seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all of Satan's dominion. I've said the spirit of this age. You see, Adam gave dominion that God gave to Adam to over to Satan. So Satan, when he came to the earth, it was his. Adam had relinquished the title to the deed of this place that God had given to him. When he sinned, he lost that dominion. And Satan took it over. So in a sense, Satan became the God of this age, this world. But God said, I, my son has died for that sin that Adam made. And I have seated him after his resurrection. I took him and seated him at the right hand of glory. Glory being... All God is, is glory. The glory of God, His Shekinah glory, is the presence of God. He is not physical. He's not sitting in that chair. It glows with glory. The throne of God is basically not material. It is a light form. And all we can see of God is His glory and experience His glory. 
And he put all things under his feet. So everything in this material world has been given to Christ. Everything. Every physical thing that God intended for this world to do and be has been given to Christ. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. Now, I hope you're getting ready to catch this. The fullness of him who fills all in all. The church is becoming the fullness of all that Christ died on the cross for. Let me, let me read that again and listen. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. You were born dead. You were born in sin in which you once walked according to the course of this world. And, and from the time you were born, you have been directed by yourself to do your will for you. Your life has been given to the effort of you being all you want you to be. That's what we are. Not having anything to do with God. It's about us. It's about me being and doing all that I want to do. According to the prince of the power of the air. Okay, so if I'm serving me, I'm not serving God. My good has nothing to do with God. It has to do with me. And that's why my goodness is like filthy rags. Your goodness, all you're trying to do is create a good image so that you can look good. And the world says, oh, look at that good person. But it has nothing to do with God and His purpose. It serves, as it says right here, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So all flesh is controlled by the spirit of this world, of this age, which is Satan. That's what it says. The prince of the power of the air. There are principalities and powers that rule over the Olympics. We see the spirit of this age is at work in this world. In the education system, in the political system, in the family situation. Satan is conforming the world to his image, to what he wants. And the only thing that can stop him, the Spirit of God. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the knowledge of God, among also whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. And the scripture says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boastful pride of life. Look what I have done. Look what I have accomplished. I am something. And, and I want to satisfy my inner desire. Oh, that I may have whatever I want. <coughs> whomever I want. And we lust after those things. And so the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh. 
Oh man, I'm going to eat one. That food is so good. And, and we can see that it's easy for lust to, we, we can think of lust as sexual, uh, as physical, but lust can be, I want a Corvette. I don't want a car, I want a Corvette. I want, and I'll do whatever it takes to get it. I want, and we, we little things like food, we allow ourselves indulgences of the flesh in every area of our lives. And it's showing in society today. We have a world that is faced with obesity. And then immediately all of us who are a little overweight say, oh no, it's me. It's, it's everything in the world. It's every area of your life, not just at the table, but it's in everything we do. The lust of the flesh is prevalent and of the mind. So we've got to deal with our mind and taking it control. And see, what God is doing is putting you in charge of presenting yourself to God. A holy living sacrifice. Acceptable to God. That's, that's what he's after. Where we were by nature children of wrath, just as the rest of the world. Everybody in this room is not exempt from who you were. But you are not that person any longer. You have been seated with him. And it goes on to say, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, how much does God love you? So much that he gave his only son. Only He only had one child. And he gave that child that you and I might become his heir, his children. That's who we are. Our daddy is the king, but we don't know it yet. We haven't realized who we are. Even when we were dead in the trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By Christ you have been saved. See, we, we, we lose track of salvation. It just becomes a religious term. But you've been saved from death and made alive unto God. And listen carefully to these next words. And... He has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He gave Jesus everything. Everything in this universe belongs to Jesus. And he says, and I raised you up, you, the body of Christ and made you every one of you to sit together in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus where are you sitting right now well duh. I think I'm here in this world no you are not you are seated with Christ Jesus who are you? Do you know who you are? God has said, man, he said, you can't even imagine how good it's going to be when you realize what I have given you. It's my gift. I have made everyone who believes 
joint heirs with my son. Am I proud of my son? He gets it all. And what does he say? No, Father. Those who believe in me, they shall possess everything that you have promised to me. Oh, Lord, we're not worthy. We don't deserve that. You mean me coming and expressing my faith in you is considered to be glory? Do you see yourselves glowing in the dark right now? The glory of God is upon you. And that, and listen to this, that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace. Oh, to all of the angels that God, billions of angels, you shall stand before them and God will present, it says, that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. When all the angels that have stood beside you through your life, tried to help you where they could and do what they could do it. All the angels of God are going to witness His presentation. Lord, these who fell short of the glory of God because of their being lost to sin have been made righteous and holy. And they appear before God, glory. And all of the angels will look upon your glorious presentation. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Look what I did. It had nothing to do with you had to do with Him. And you believing in Him and accepting what He has done for you that you might receive His glory and majesty. For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. That's what we do. Everything we do, take every thought captive. Everything that you do, do as unto the Lord. And you're doing, and it says here, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand before the foundations of the earth that we should walk in them. Now, boys and girls and sports fans, I have just given you the Christian manifesto. That is everything you need to know about who you are, what your inheritance is, and what God is getting ready to throw upon you. We're going to get to go to the coronation. Oh, and we're sitting at the head table. Oh, and we're going to receive crowns and glory and honor and praise that wasn't ours and we say lord i'm not worthy all that i did was to serve you with all my heart and i fell short of that and he says enter in my beloved enter into my glory let's pray oh lord jesus we don't know how we got where we are we will not know how we did it, Lord, when we get there to that day. We'll think, Lord, I, I didn't know that I was doing things that would get me the glory that I don't seem to deserve. And Lord, I pray for each one of us that 
Father, help us. Oh Lord, we are each one struggling with our flesh. Lord, our lust, we seek after our own satisfaction, our own desires. Even in our children and our wants, Lord, it's us. And, and Lord, we give you all of our desires. You say, delight thyself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And so, Lord, as we delight ourselves in You, You will make manifest in us the goodness that You desire of all things. Bless us and cause us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, Amen.